Hi everybody, Liz and Annie back again with another tutorial. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun tonight and this week exploring all the different like video filters and virtual backgrounds and different add-ons that you can do for your Zoom background. Nice job, Kalina. That's that's gorgeous. We have here a smattering of the different things you can do. We've got Diamond as an animated deck. Erica is in a video. I think it's a filter that puts you into a living room. Rachel is a pickle. Annie's got unicorn stuff. This is just what I look like all the time, so I'm not doing anything in particular. And then Kalina's got a rainbow like carving through her image. So this is, honestly, this is probably going to be a common experience for people who are teaching. As soon as your students figure out that they all have these options that all the instructors have as well. So it might be a little bit distracting. Some of us might want to prepare for more informal, more casual kinds of meetings where people are abusing this, like everyone is doing as they're cycling through the different options that they have. But one thing we wanted to um, highlight that might be pedagogically useful is a strategy that, that looks amazing, Kalina, yes, and Diamond and Rachel, okay, uh, that Kate has come up with, or the, not come up with, but hit on as she's been teaching in the last few months remotely and doing all our meetings remotely and living in Zoom like a lot of us have. So I'm going to turn it over. Annie and I are going to turn it over to Kate, and she's going to walk us through an option that you have. Diamond, that's so creepy, especially as you are surrounded by, like, video filtering-related chaos. So take it away, Kate. Yeah, so I've become a huge advocate of turning off your self-view. I don't know that it necessarily helps with the distraction factor, which is massive in this particular context. Um, but one of the things that after six plus months of doing Zoom that I have noticed is that it gets really exhausting to be on Zoom all day, whether that's teaching or in meetings. And so pretty early on, I figured out that one of the things that was making it exhausting is staring at my own ridiculous face all day, which we don't normally do. Normally when we're talking to other people, we can't see ourselves. So it's really unnatural to be able to see yourself when you're talking very distracting. It sort of adds a level of, of uh, burden essentially to your mind to have to like be monitoring your own look while you're talking. So I always now uh, in meetings, especially turn off my self view, which I suspect uh, Liz or Annie could demonstrate mm -hmm. for us how to do that. And there are videos about that. Um, if you feel like you really need to watch yourself, I think one alternative that is, is reasonable now that Zoom allows you to move things around is to make sure you at least put your self view as close to your camera as possible, which is probably top center. Uh, and that way, if you are distracted inevitably, as we all are by our own faces, um, at least that way your eyes are going to remain relatively close to the camera. So at least for other people, you seem a little more engaged, not that your eyes are kind of darting over to the side constantly to check out, you know, what your hair is doing, or if you have something on your face. But if I may, I just strongly recommend trying a few meetings or teaching sessions with yourself you turned off and see if you feel a little more natural and a little less tired at the end of it. That's excellent. Thank you, Kate, for that recommendation or that potential suggestion if you have found yourself in that position. Okay, all of us look amazing. We'll be back with some more tutorials and how-tos, maybe some Halloween-themed ones in the near future. Everyone have good, uh, good luck with the skill. Good luck testing all this stuff out.